Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining this week's Tips and Tricks webinar. Today's topic is the RU1 management and features. Uh, please use the Q&A chat if you have any questions during this demo. And, uh, you know, you could ask during it too. Bryce is gonna be moving through the uh, demo, the interface. So anything he's showing on screen, you can jump right in and I'll ask that question for you. Um, let me see. Uh, our presenter is an SC on our federal team, Bryce Halkerson. Uh, Bryce, take it away. All right. How's it going, guys? Um, yeah, so I'm just doing an overview of like how I have my lab set up uh, for this demo. Uh, I'm not going to PowerPoint you to death, so uh, this is going to be all, you know, hands on. So uh, on my, um, I have three VMs set up. They're all R81 gateways, uh, pretty easy to set up. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna use the Smart One Cloud as my manager. And I also have um, my uh, 3200 hardware hooked up too. Anyway, so let's just gonna jump right in. Um, just gonna show you some uh, new features of R81. Let me bring up the console here. So I'm just using the GUI console. You can also use the web, uh, which is kind of nice, but I, you know, I, pr I prefer using the actual GUI. And it's easy to hook up to the to the Smart One console. So, all right. Uh, so uh, the, I guess the the big thing is um, everybody wants to know about the Lightning push. Uh, there's one caveat. If you're uh, if you're using uh, threat prevention, it, it will not go into lightning mode. So I, I'm not sure. They're talking about maybe R81, uh, R8110 or 20 when that's going to be possible. So I'll just go through a real quick um, review. Um, one thing you'll notice uh, this will you know, smart update is going to be going away also in R8110 or 20. So you could do everything locally, one pane of glass, which is kind of nice. You could do all the licensing and upgrades. So I'll just go right into um, the gateways here and I'll do a quick, um, so you can see that you have a license tab like in the gateways and servers. This is really nice. I, I, I like having everything right here. So I can, you know, either add or remove with license files, or I can add it with a string, or, you know, you can get rid of them too. And the other really nice thing is uh, the upgrading. Once again, single pane of glass, um, there's a repository for all the hot fixes. So you can like, you know, upload, you know, you can like bring it local. Whoops. So you can bring all your ISOs in. It's pretty nice. And just upload the packages. Um, let's go right into uh, the policy pushes. Uh-oh. What's going on here? Oh, there we go. So I'll show you the difference on how fast uh, the policy pushes are. This is um, my R8040. And 
And this is the other really nice thing about um, R81. By the time this finishes, so I'll go through. I'm doing the exact same, exact same change on R81. And you can push up to uh, 10 policies at a time, which is a nice feature. So you can do mass changes at one time. And that is a new option with 81? Yes. So if you could see that, you know, this is still pushing. And you'll see, oh, it's not lightning. Huh, okay. Well, usually there's a lightning bolt. You'll see a lightning bolt when you're pushing policy. Can you explain again what lightning is? So lightning is, is it's just, um, it, it's up to 90% uh, faster on pushing policy. And I, I did, let me double check here. Yeah. I don't know why it's not in lightning mode here. I might have uh, enabled. Um, once you enable threat prevention, it, it's only it's only good for like you know firewall access pushes, and you'll there would be a lightning bolt here. Let me try to let's try to push this one. See if we can get a lightning out of this. It's if, if you notice the policy installation is a lot faster than R eighty forty. That's for sure. Let's see if I can get the, the lightning here. Yeah, see the lightning bolt. If you yep. you know if you're not push if you don't have to push threat prevention it's uh it's a it's a lot faster. Kind of nice, huh? All right, now let's um let's do an upgrade. Let's say if I have to do a jumble jumbo hot fix, this is uh really nice. So you just have to go to actions. Oops, wrong one, sorry. So it gives you an option and, you know, for upgrades. What, and that, that's another uh, really nice thing about uh, upgrades. So if I wanted to go to, you know, let's say R8040 to R81, and if it's a cluster, it automatically will do the secondary uh, firewall, you know, upgrade first. And the clustering is backwards compatible. So it will not take over as the active uh, gateway until the installation starts um, the original primary. So then it will fail over. So it's pretty nice. Uh, let's go to R84, take 89, let's say. I uh, got a question, is that a... Um... Compatible with lower versions than 40 gateways? It, it, it will go back to uh, R80 10. So if you're going from R80 10 to R81, it is backwards compatible. So it will know not to, you know, how usually you have to manually fail things like, okay, let's do this one. And then it, you get in that kind of uh, like a mix up 
during the upgrade. So this way it automatically um, does the insulations without an outage. And the other caveat uh, to the upgrade, it does an automatic snapshot of the box. And I'll show you that when I'll, I'll log in. Uh, got a question here. Is this uh, CDT, the central deployment tool? Uh, it's, it's kind of like um, a better version of um, Smart Update. So you know how you have the packages in Smart Update? Um, this is just an improvement, you know, within the same GUI. Smarter update. Yeah, exactly. You know, and it's, it's kind of intuitive. It tells you everything that's going on and, you know, it will, it will definitely, when it's rebooting, it'll X out, um, and it will show you on clusters too. So why that's going on, um, we'll get into um, the threat prevention. Now this is uh, I guess I got a lot going on here. So now there's infinite, infinity uh, threat prevention. So this is where Checkpoint just handles all the updates. It does everything for you. It gives all the recommended, you know, for perimeter, cloud, internal, and you could just select what you want. Um, now, the other thing is, it's either you're gonna run the infinity or the threat prevention. You can't do both, it's either one or the other. So if I go back up to the old threat prevention here. And this is kind of nice because, you know, you don't have to worry about you know, IPS updates, um, everything's done in the cloud. So it's, it's a pretty nice feature. So those are pre-configured canned configurations for those different scenarios you showed, right? It, are exactly. They, are they still customizable? Like, can you select one and then customize it? Yes, you can. And would that, it, would that impact the updates at that point? No, it will not. Um, so, you know how you have, um, of course, there's things that you have to let in. So you can do bypasses, um, you know, exceptions. So it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, hey, this is how everybody that's running on the perimeter does it. You know, it's just best practices built in. So there's no gu guessing and, you know, it just makes life a lot easier. Got a couple and, of questions for you. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go, go for it, yeah. Uh, is threat prevention per gateway, therefore running uh, infinity threat prevention on one gateway and regular threat prevention on another gateway? Sure, you can do that. Uh, it just has to be a different policy. So, you know, I have different policies, so uh, I don't think I did infinity on R80. I might have. Yeah, I accidentally did that. But, you know, so you can run like on this R8040, I can run, you know, the manual threat prevention where you have to configure everything. Uh, got another question about the mm -hmm. upgrade process. Are gateways still downloading the Jumbo hotfix locally and automatically? Oh, okay. That's a great question. Um, so 
Yeah. So here we go. We, you can notice it's rebooting right now. Um, bring this up here so right now i have it set to automatic so if i i can force it to use management and that will be in the what was in the repository or you can upload it to the gateway which would be faster if you have the package in cpus does that make sense so automatically, uh, I'm not sure what it prefers automatically, but I'm, I'm guessing because the speed of how this is, uh, let me cancel this on how fast this is moving. I'm pretty sure it used the gateway. And it gives you a nice status, like, you know, it's saying it's rebooting. And it'll red X up here that a lost communication. And like I said, the snapshot was done automatically, right? Yes. So let me, yeah, that's what the next thing I was going to do. Um, uh, two fifty one. We'll ask a quick question while he's logging mm -hmm. in here. If anybody raise your hand, is anybody currently using R81 who is attending? Oh, sorry. So this is where it's usually, uh, that's the manual one I did. Uh, I, I, you know what, I reverted it back, that's why. But like when you do a major upgrade, it will automatically take a snapshot and it'll name it, you know, hey, this is the upgrade, you know, snapshot. Uh, so that's how you can revert back. And technically, if there is an issue, it will automatically revert if it runs into a problem. So it is definitely a lot more intuitive uh, on upgrades. And you can actually do them in batches. You could do 10 gateway um, upgrades at one time. Any other questions about that? Sorry, I was muted. Uh, not right now. So okay. we did there. And it's nice just to have, uh, you know, like I said, that one pane of glass where you can do everything from. So, you know, this can be rather than, you know, having to jump to CPUs or command line for every single gateway, this is just, it's all automated. It's kind of nice. Uh, I have a question about the scalable platforms or is that in line with the R81 main train code here? I believe the answer there is uh, yes, right? Yes. And the chassis. Yes. Um, you know, I haven't, uh, I haven't done anything with Maestro yet on R81, but there's, it's everything's going to be, you know, when it's main train, it's right now, it's, um, we're still recommending R8040, but uh, R81 is definitely going to be the next main train and it should be coming out. You know, uh, it when you log into, um, here, let me go to the portal. So if I want to add a gateway, um,
And I, I'll show you like it. This is where you can definitely confirm, you know, what's recommended. And, and, and this is kind of critical here too when you're adding gateways because you have to make sure you use, you select the the correct version because the commands are different when you're connecting up a gateway. So as you can see that R8040 is still the recommended version. Uh, I have another upgrade question here. After an upgrade, can we generate a report showing which gateways got the upgrade, if there were any issues, et cetera? Oh yeah, so Um, like yesterday, so I was trying to like, um, you know, do a hot fix for the R81 gateways and I, I didn't have um, enough disk space on them. So you'll, you'll get a, a big warning message here. And like I said, it will automatically revert, like it will just quit and it will maintain its uh, current level. Uh, but it, it'll give you all the information here. There's like a little report that comes up if it fails. And it will tell you exactly why it failed. Like in my case, when I was trying to do the hot fixes for the RD1 gateways, uh, I, I didn't have enough disk space on my VMs to do the install. Okay. So it, it gives you a lot of good information. Um, it's kind of just like... Um, when you go into CPUs, uh, when you do the upgrades there, you know, it tells you exactly what's going on. And it's the same kind of like, you know, for the new, you know, smart update on the smart console. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No more questions right now. If you have any questions, please throw them in the Q&A there. Uh, oh, just got another one. Hang on. Oh, that was a thank you. You're welcome. And it would definitely be, um, if you're, if I'm using, a, you know, an SMS or something on site, this would definitely go a lot faster. I'm, I'm coming from the cloud. So, and you know my gateways are in my house, so it's 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 it takes a little bit longer exactly. using the lab environment. Yeah, 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 exactly. I and you know I only have you know one CPU running on my gateway, so I'm I'm limited to what my laptop can do. Uh, is there any, I know you're looking at management here, but there was a question about 80.1 performance. Is there anything notable performance? Yes. Improvement? Yeah. So Core Excel is automated. So it will automatically, you know, do all the fine tuning right out of the box. Uh, I guess they started doing that with uh, R8040. So it's something you don't have to manually tune. It does it for you. So that takes a lot of headaches out right there. Yep. You don't have to be a... Uh... Uh, I have another upgrade question. How do you program it to run the update on the gateway instead of downloading it first to var log on the manager? Thank you. I think you showed that with your uh, gateway or management dropdown. Or uh like exactly what you like when i go to uh let's see let me go back there so i can force it yeah the location there is that what you meant yeah yes yeah. so i can force it to use the you know what's on the gateway 
So if I, uh, I just rebooted that. So the upgrade on the, my 3200 just, just rebooted. Okay. And it should be coming up soon here. But but does that does that make sense? We're you know I I I should have looked into this a little bit more. I think it automatically, you know, rather than downloading the whole package again to the gateway, it will run what's on the gateway, or I can force it to run, you know, the package source. Yeah. So he just asked again. So so then the gateway will know to download it if it's not already downloaded. Well. The manager will, so from the repository, these are good questions. Um, I can force it to use, you know, the repository by selecting manager. So this is what I have downloaded locally. It was, you know, shows you, you know, that this, this hotfix, or is it a hotfix? Uh, oh, this is brush install. That's still in the cloud. So yeah, you, you would have to download it. And this will show you that it's running locally, that it's been downloaded before. Let me see how my, uh, I was hoping to get this uh, up, you know, this jumbo hotfix installed by the end here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, the live demos, it always happens. Yeah, that's, yeah. And it's, you know, I, I ran through it a couple of times, but, you know, it's, it, it'll tell you the exact times, like how long it, you know, how long it took. Um, so, and then, you know, it gives you the steps that it's on. Got another question from Dan here on that same, on the packages here. Mm -hmm. You need to check the gateway first in CPUs to make sure it's been downloaded if you're loading it from the gateway. No, you don't. So if the gateway doesn't have it and it's on the manager, the first thing we'll do is download to the gateway. And it will act, it's another process. Um, so if it's if it doesn't exist on the gateway, uh, the first step is to download it to the gateway. Let me see if, uh, if this is back up here. All right. And the other nice thing about the upgrade, it'll automatically, so if I went to already one, It'll automatically update the version. So that's one less step you have to do. So you don't have to drill into it and change it. And the caveat of here it is set back up and running. Um, and it'll see how it says it's up to date now. Since I did that hot fix. Finished, great. Yeah, look at that. See it. So it's going to probably tell me here uh, to upgrade to take ninety one because I just put on take eighty nine. And if I go back into the guy up, And this is, uh, if you wanted to manually, I, I, I could uninstall this update too. And 
And this is another place where you can get all the, um, information to, uh, let's get back to the smart console here. So it's, it's, a, it's a nice feature. Great. Any, any other questions uh, about the upgrades? Um, we're good, we're at the bottom of the hour here. We can. Obviously, if anybody has any other additional questions we didn't cover here, talk to your uh, your account team, your local SC. They'll be happy to help you out. Um, thank you, Bryce, for that great information. Um, we'll send a follow-up email with any reference content and the recording link for this session. Our next webinar will be in two weeks on March 12th, and this is one you won't want to miss. We're having our head of incident response, Dan Wiley, on to give us a threat recap for 2020, which was... Uh, a heck of a year in the threat landscape, so you don't want to miss that. Uh, you'll see the invitation for that soon. But with that, I'll give you back the rest of your day. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. Thanks again, Bryce, and I'll right. see you in two weeks. All right, uh -oh. thank you very much.